Hi, this is Jennifer from Positively Learning, and today this video is going to be short and sweet. I am filming this um, the last week of May, so we're getting school year, and congratulations to you if you have already finished. Um, if you have several more weeks, I get it. Hang in there. Um, I'm sharing an activity that would possibly make it much, much easier <laughs> to get through those last few weeks. However, if you are watching this at any time of the year, um, these activities would be great as well. So it's all about those fidget poppers. Right now, those are the hottest gadget. It reminds me very much of the fidget spinners that we saw a few years ago. And when I was in the classroom with fidget spinners and they were like making us lose our minds, we had rules about them, how they couldn't be out or they'd be taken away. And I think it was at the time when they were not easy to find. So, I mean, now they're like 99 cents. You can find them anywhere. But at the time, not so much. And um, I had a choice. I had a choice to either fight against it and collect them in my June drawer or use them. Use them for learning. And you know what? Of course, if you know me, I used them for learning and it was awesome. I mean, we were learning like that last week of school. No problem. We were all about it. That's what this the idea is behind this. Now, I do have a link to free fidget spinner literacy activity. And then I thought this will be perfect for the fidget poppers, our new brand new trend. Um, these would be great to do math. So you have a little bit of each one. OK, so what I wanted to do was show you how these math games work. There are several different games I outlined five of them. However, as I go through them very quickly with you, I bet you're going to think of even more as you keep your own students' needs in mind. All right, so I'm going to download it and open it right up like I usually do in my videos so we can walk through it together. Now, if you're saying, oh, hold on, I don't even want to watch this because there is no way I'm going to <laughs> divide attention having these fidget poppers in the classroom, I totally get it. There are some alternatives to using these activities without the fidget popper. Just using a graphic of it, I'll show you what I mean. But using a fidget popper graphic so you're still working with the popularity and the interest and the engagement, but you're not necessarily like saying like, hey, hey, I'm over here, you know, because they're playing with the fidget popper the whole time. Whatever works for you. Okay, let me decrease this a little bit and show you the table of contents. So this is designed for math groups you can use it with a fidget popper, any size, or without. You can use um, a math mat that has a picture of a fidget popper on it, and I'll show you those in a moment. All right, so these activities do come in color and in black and white. They're very low prep, and the color is very minimal. I think it's like five pages. Um, might be a few more, but I'll show you. And so I think that would be um, fun to have something in color. However, I also prefer the black and white because I like to color code, make things yellow, make things red, make things blue, and that way I can organize them and keep them straight. That's just how my type A teacher brain works. All right, the first activity is roll, count, and pop. And this is a little different, that bet this is not what you expected because instead of a student popping the fidget popper, this is a fine motor activity. So you would need some type of fidget popper or the math mat, I will show you at the end. Um, and you're going to be using some kind of fine motor tool. So you can use tweezers. I just prefer using, like, using their hands. And then something for them to pick up mini erasers work. I love pom-poms because my students love pom-poms and they're inexpensive and they are so quiet. Uh, mini erasers are pretty quiet too. And students are going to be rolling a dice, um, two dice, three dice, one die, whatever number your students are going to be working with. And they're going to roll that and they're going to cover that number of popping spaces. And that is it. That's all it is. And you could have two students working together. They each have like their own color of pom-poms and they're like racing to see which one fills it up first. You can have students working by themselves. You could have this as a performance task where students are rolling, um, counting, and then doing a one-to-one, -one. the one-to-one -one correspondence, whatever works for you and your students. So that's the first activity that is a little more fine motor than um, 
the fidget popper. The next one is count and pop. And this, I'm showing a picture of the fine motor um, math mat. So this is a picture of a graphic. And so you could use the same thing that we just talked about tweezers, fingers, pom-poms, pick a card, count the number, identify that numeral like, oh, there's six stars, or actually there's seven stars or six dots. And then you would move to the math mat and either use the fine motor tool to cover up the spots, or you could use a crayon. The fidget spaces are a little too small for like a bingo dabber, but um, but you could use a marker. You could use like one of those marker stampers. You could use whatever whatever works. Um, these even could be put into a dry erase sleeve so that you could create a center and have students use them again and again. So that is count and pop. Then you could use the same um, types of cards. I added some extras that were just the numerals and some operation signs, and you could have students create um, number sentences, and they could use the popper as a manipulative. So for addition, like student pops three, and then student pops two, so how many are popped? Five, hopefully. And subtraction, of course, you could do the same thing. It's, let's pretend this is subtraction. Student pops three, take away two. How many pops are left? hopefully one. So that's what they could use um, this as a math manipulative tool. The next one I love because this is what my students always needed more time of and I love the visual representation. So you're grabbing a popper or the fine motor mat and you're using the numeral cards. So repurposing these and the operation cards. And here you're having students compare. Okay, five is less than six, or six is greater than five. But if you are using one of these poppers, and I do recommend like a square, a rectangle, something that has an equal amount. So a student would pop the five, then pop the six, and look at that comparison they can make. You could also do this as the fine motor tool. Cover up five, cover up six, compare. So that is, oh, I'm so excited about that. You know, you could do that on just a table, right? You don't need a fidget popper, but first of all, why not? It's so much fun. But also, I, I've done it on the table. You know, we've done it with drawing pictures, but my students, like when we draw pictures, it's like, they're not all the same size. <laughs> so sometimes like four circles looks larger than six circles or whatever your number is um, because of the way they drew it. Or you're doing it on a tabletop and things like roll. You know, they're rolling away. You can't get them exactly equal. I use 10 frames, of course, most often, but this fidget popper works too. The next one is a partner game, race to the top. So they each have their own fidget popper, any size, like the heart, the circle, the square, large, small, whatever. And students will take turns picking a number card or a counting card or rolling a dice, whatever will give them a final number. So then they go to their popper and they pop that amount of numbers, any order, or anywhere they want, just getting some extra counting. And they're going to continue taking turns, getting a number, popping that same number, corresponding um, pops. And then they're going to just be racing to see who can fill theirs in first. So race to the pop is what I call that one. Very, very fun. All right. And then here's a whole page of extras that you'll see in this packet. I even threw in three different literacy ideas. And then here's the cards. So there are color cards and there's also black and white. I like the black and white because I like printing them on different colored paper. Like I'll make a center that's all blue, a center that's all red, a center that's all pink. It just makes it fun easy, <laughs> easy to stay organized and clean up at the end. All right, and so there are numeral cards, then there's the operation cards, and then here's the fine motor mats. So again, I would put these inside a sheet projector or dry erase sleeve, or if you wanted to use it with like crayons, markers, you could um, put these, just print them and copy them for your students. And that's it. Very simple, but boy, lots packed in here and it could really save the day um, and definitely have a lot of student 
buy-in and enjoyment. All right, thanks so much for watching. I will link this below, but I will also link the fidget spinners, which is that free activity. It has sight words and then decoding some early phonics skills. Awesome for this um, end of school year activities. All right, take care.